Well, good morning. Today is the last scene setter before we actually tackle the Ten Commandments themselves. We've looked at the connections between law and love, between love and obedience. And these are overarching themes that span the Bible. Today, we're looking at the Ten Commandments in the context of the wider law. You can define law in at least three ways. It can refer to the first five books of the Bible. So when Jews refer to the Torah, they're referring to that those first five books. So that includes Genesis, but actually Moses and therefore the law doesn't appear until Exodus, the second book. So that's kind of imprecise. Or it can refer to the Ten Commandments that we're about to take off from. That's the absolute condensed core of the law. Or thirdly, it can refer to the entire Hebrew legal apparatus that starts with the Ten Commandments and then catalogues another 600 laws more than through the rest of Exodus, all of Leviticus and most of Numbers. And when Orthodox Jews refer to the law, they normally mean this wider definition of the whole lot of 623 statutes. Now, if you've ever sat down to read Leviticus from start to finish, you'll know it's hard work. Many of the small laws seem unbearably tedious and frankly irrelevant to us. Some are obviously very current and always will be. And hands up, for example, who thinks perjury is irrelevant? Or that marrying your sister is just fine? Nobody. They're there for all time. And actually, if you scratch the surface, even apparently minor pedantic little laws smuggle in a heart message. So when you have a child, you lay down the law about please and thank you. But what you're really teaching them is to be grateful and to be considerate of others. That's kind of an aside. But what should we obey? All 600? Well, we can't. That's not possible. There's no Aaronic priesthood for Extartus. And the New Testament forbids circumcision, so that's part of the law too, and we can't obey it. So if we can't obey all of them, and we can't obey none of them, and neither Jesus nor Paul let us off that easily, how do we differentiate? Do we pick and choose? I fancy this, but I don't fancy that. Or is there a logical way of being selective? Well, fortunately there is. The law, the bigger definition, can be divided into three blocks. There's the moral law, the civil law, and the ceremonial law. So the ceremonial law, well, that refers to temple worship, priestly rituals and uniforms, types of sacrifice, statutory festivals, etc. But Jesus is now both our high priest and our sacrificial lamb. And that completely invalidates animal sacrifices. And in any case, there's no temple to perform them in any way. Neither do Gentile Christians observe Jewish festivals. So the ceremonial law just doesn't apply anymore. Then you have the civil law, which covers things like personal injury compensation, property rights, regulations on war, kingship, taxes, etc. But if you're not a nation, none of these apply either. Which leaves us with just one section, the moral law. That includes the Ten Commandments, and it still applies, even for Gentile followers of Jesus like me. Please bear this in mind next week as we let them challenge us. Grace and peace to you and yours.